continuing with the Bhagavad Gita Sutras. So here we go. Here we go. Endowed with faith, he that uh, invokes any form as a deity of the formless, he or she obtains through this deity, without doubt, his desired enjoyment and fulfillment of desires coming from pure consciousness. So let me explain this a little bit. Faith and belief are not the same thing. Belief is an idea that you hold to be true. And actually, belief can be a cover-up for insecurity. If I asked you, do you believe in gravity? You'd say it's obvious. Do you believe in electricity? You'd say it's obvious. Do you believe in God? For well, most people, that's an idea that they hold to be true. So what the Vedanta says, faith is beyond that. Faith is having the certainty through experience of the invisible self that makes all things visible. Difference between faith and belief. I, I am, that is, know the beings of the past, present, and those that are to come. But no one knows me, the infinite being, with certainty, unless they transcend the five senses. Brilliant, absolutely. In this world, through the delusion of dualities born of insecurity, grasping, recoiling, and false identity, all beings are enveloped in ignorance, ignorance of fundamental truth. There is no sin. There is only ignorance. When the veil of ignorance is lifted, then enlightenment follows. The supreme indestructible Brahman, one's own self, is called Adhyatma. Adhyatma. The creative force that brings beings into existence is called karma. Karma creates the projection that we call perceptual reality. All perishable objects are adibhuta. Adibhuta. It literally means physical impermanence. All perishable objects are adibhuta. The purusha, the supreme being, is adhideva. Deva means divine. And in this body dwells as the inner witness. Actually, it witnesses the body. So the body is in the witness. In the witness. You are not in the world. You are not in the body. The body is in you. Knowing all this, I dwell in the body as adhyajna, ad, which is the self-sacrifice of the absolute and become, that becomes uh, the theater of space-time and causality. So sacrifice, the absolute sacrifice itself to experience the relative. He who departs from the body, remembering his or her infinite divine nature at the time of death, he attains liberation. There is no doubt about this. At the time of death, with unshaken mind, full of devotion by the power of yoga, directing the life breath prana to the point between the eyebrows, thus such a person reaches the supreme divine. I repeat that. At the time of death, with unshaken mind, full of devotion by the power of yoga, directing the life breath prana to the point between the eyebrows, such a person reaches the divine supreme being and merges with the divine supreme being. He who utters the single syllable Om, Om, which is Brahman, and uses mantra as he departs or she departs, giving up the body, goes to the higher school. I am easily attainable 
by that ever by that ever steadfast yogi who is constantly aware of the self. Those that know that a day of Brahma lasts a thousand yugas and the night of Brahma also lasts a thousand yugas, they are the knowers of day and night. A yuga is a cycle of thousand years. And last one for today. <clears throat> At the coming of the day, Brahma's day, all beings manifest. Sorry, I'll repeat that. At the coming of the day, Brahma's day, all manifest beings proceed from the unmanifest. And at the coming of the night, they merge again in the same, which is unmanifest. We are unmanifest, timeless beings that take vacations in time-bound experiences. Okay, my friends, more to come.